Hello and welcome to our online worship this morning. I'm so glad you've been able to tune in and join us here on our YouTube channel. I'd like to welcome you if this is your first time joining us and if you're returning, welcome to you too. And I'd like to invite you to be in touch with myself or Pastor Phil if uh, you'd like to ask any questions or get to know a little bit more about our Westview community or to get connected with some of our Westview community. We do have life groups still available. We have opportunities for prayer. You can also visit our website at www.westviewbaptist.ca and you can even submit your own prayer request there. So there are several opportunities to get connected. And you may have noticed beside me, I have a Christmas tree. Some of you may think it's a little early, but I'm seeing a lot of people getting excited for Christmas. People have been putting up their Christmas lights and at Westview, we are getting ready for Christmas too. If you looked at our mailing, you may have noticed there's an opportunity to serve with the Christmas kettle campaign, but we also have uh, some stuff for our kids. We have a countdown to Christmas advent calendar. So be in touch with me if you have any kids that you'd like to have a countdown to Christmas calendar. But we're also going to have some virtual opportunities for kids to do crafts and participate in online Christmas bingo. So be in touch with me if you would like to participate in any of those kids programs. And before we begin our worship, we have our call to worship for this morning, and it comes from Psalm 145, verses 9 through 13, and we will read it together to prepare our hearts. The Lord is good to all. He has compassion on all he has made. All your works praise you, Lord. Your faithful people extol you. They tell of the glory of your kingdom and speak of your might so that all the people may know of your mighty acts and the glorious splendor of your kingdom. Your kingdom is an everlasting kingdom and your dominion endures through all generations. The Lord is trustworthy in all he promises and faithful in all he does. And now let us worship together this morning.
Have you ever had somebody promise you something? Maybe they promised to do something with you or get you something special. Maybe they said the words, I promise I am going to, or whatever they said, you just knew that they were going to follow through and do what they said they were going to do. There could have been promises that were small, like, uh, can you get me my favorite breakfast at the grocery store? And you're told, yes, this is something that I got for my family. Or maybe it's a gift that you're interested in having, a favorite toy. Or maybe you've been promised to go somewhere special. Now, it's so exciting when you get these promises filled, that you get your favorite breakfast or gift, or you can travel somewhere. But the unfortunate thing is, sometimes the things people say they're going to do don't end up happening, and that can be really disappointing. For example, I know there are a lot of people that were hoping to travel somewhere over March break or over the summer, but because of travel restrictions, they couldn't go. I mean, sometimes there aren't good reasons why people don't keep their promises, but other times there are. And the unfortunate thing is, as human people, we sometimes can't keep our promises. I do have good news though, because there is someone who keeps his promises all the time, and that someone is God. God has made so many promises. If you open up and you read your Bible, uh, he's made a promise to Abraham and Sarah to give them a son. And they had a son. He made a promise that Abraham would be a father of many nations. And, you know, Abraham's son had children who had children who had lots more children. And Abraham became a father of many, many people. Also, we see God promised a savior to save his people. And that savior, if we flip to the New Testament, we see is Jesus. And Jesus was born and he saved us from our sin. And there are so many other promises, if you look through your Bible, that God has kept. Now there's somebody in the New Testament in 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 20, who talks about all the promises that God keeps. And he says, For all of God's promises have been fulfilled in Christ with a resounding yes. I am so glad to know that God keeps all his promises. We've seen it so many times through the Bible. And he is a perfect God, and that's why he can keep his promises. I mean, our family and friends, they make promises, and I hope they do their very best to keep them. And yeah, we can be disappointed, but there is somebody we will never, ever be disappointed in, and that is God, because he loves us, he is honest, he tells the truth, and when he says he's going to do something, he will do it. So make sure you rely on God because he is the ultimate promise keeper.
Hi, my name is Ann Butler and I'm going to be reading the scripture today. It's a beautiful day today. We're recording this on Tuesday, so it's 22 degrees outside and sunny and um, just thanking God today for the blessing of this warm weather in November. Uh, the scripture I'll be reading today is from 1 Chronicles chapter 16 verses 1 to 18 and I'm reading it from the New International Version. They brought the ark of God and set it inside the tent that David had pitched for it, and they presented burnt offerings and fellowship offerings before God. After David had finished sacrificing the burnt offerings and fellowship offerings, he blessed the people in the name of the Lord. Then he gave a loaf of bread, a cake of dates, and a cake of raisins to each Israelite man and woman. He appointed some of the Levites to minister before the ark of the Lord to extol, thank, and praise the Lord, the God of Israel. Asaph was the chief, and next to him in rank were Zechariah, then Jaziel, Shemiramoth, Jehiel, Mattatiah, Eliab, Benaiah, Obed-Edom, and Jael. They were to play the lyres and harps. Asaph was to sound the cymbals, and Benaiah and Jehaziel the priests were to blow the trumpets regularly, before the Ark of the Covenant of God. That day, David first appointed Asaph and his associates to give praise to the Lord in this manner. Give praise to the Lord. Proclaim his name. Make known among the nations what he has done. Sing to him. Sing praise to him. Tell of all his wonderful acts. Glory in his holy name. Let the hearts of those who seek the Lord rejoice. Look to the Lord in his strength. Seek his face always. Remember the wonders he has done, his miracles and the judgments he pronounced. You, his servants, the descendants of Israel, his chosen ones, the children of Jacob. He is the Lord our God. His judgments are in all the earth. He remembers his covenant forever, the promise he made for a thousand generations, the covenant he made with Abraham, the oath he swore to Isaac. He confirmed it to Jacob as a decree, to Israel as an everlasting covenant. To you I will give the land of Canaan as the portion you will inherit. This is God's word for us today. Hello and thanks for joining me again. We are in week three of our series called Don't Forget. And we've looked at a few things that God doesn't want us to forget. He wants us to remember uh, as, a, as a way of undergirding us, of strengthening us during uh, difficult times. We're reminded by God to not forget whose we are, that when we put our faith in Christ, we are his. We are reminded to not forget where we come from. And just like the Israelites needed to remember the tough times and tough circumstances that they came out of, um, in order to remember who brought them out and the power that is in God and in that relationship. So we too are invited to remember the tough times in our past because it points us back towards what God has done in our lives. And today I want us to not forget the promises. Now, there are all sorts of different kinds of promises that we can make. Sometimes they are explicit promises. Sometimes they are more implicit. Um, I'm holding here an, uh, an owner's manual for a very important item in our house, and that's our Keurig coffee maker. Now, when I flip through the pages of this owner's manual, I see how to set it up, how to clean it, how to uh, uh, troubleshoot. But right at the very end, I also see that there is a warranty. And uh, the warranty is a promise from the company to me as the owner that if something goes wrong within a certain period of time, they will look after that problem. Now, of course, as I read the fine print of this warranty, I see that there are limitations, certain things that they won't cover. There's a time limit to it. After one year, they will not honor this, uh, this agreement. And uh, there are also things that I can do that will make this, this agreement null and void. If I you know, decide to try to play basketball with our Keurig maker, well, they will not cover any damages there. That's my fault. This is a, an agreement of sorts. There are all sorts of agreements that we can enter into in the world around us, and some are far more weighty 
and uh, than others, and we would actually call them promises. Um, certainly when it comes to relationships, we have promises, such as in marriage, uh, such as when we enter into membership in an organization, including a church. There are certain commitments that we make. There are promises that we make, and we need to remember those promises because God wants us to be people who live up to those promises. Why? Because that's what God is like, and he wants us to be a reflection of him. And we can look to the promises that God has made to understand how we live out the promises in our own lives. Does this matter these days? Well, I think it does. Uh, you and I are going through some pretty uh, incredible times right now, and people are under a lot of pressure. We're actually hearing uh, that people are experiencing pressures in relationships like never before. Marriages are being stretched thin. Uh, husbands and wives are struggling to get along where they may have had great relationships in the past. There's a strain now because we're living under different times and relationships that were strained before are, are falling apart now um, now that's true in marriages but it's also true in other other relationships where we're just we're struggling we're struggling to find our footing in terms of how to cope with the world around us under these very different circumstances god has shown us the way that he lives out his promises to his people and he gives that not only as an example to us, but he also gives that as the context within which we live out our promises. So what am I talking about? And I'm talking really about a very uh, important word, a very unique word called covenant. A covenant is a special kind of pr uh, promise, a special kind of contract, you might call, call it, but uh, contract seems kind of business-like. We'll get into the differences in a minute. But a covenant is a special promise that God makes with people in order to establish a relationship with them. We, uh, we see in the passage that we read today from 1 Chronicles chapter 16 that the, the covenant has already been made between God and his people Israel. But in this passage, they are remembering it. They're celebrating it. Uh, and, you know, it's, they're, they're making a point of saying this is a part of who we are. God had made a promise generations and generations before to a man named Abraham. And God promised that he would make Abraham's descendants into a great nation and that that nation would receive a land and that that nation would become a blessing to the nations around them, to all the peoples of the world. He reaffirmed that promise when a man named Moses helped to lead the descendants of Abraham out of slavery in Egypt and on their way to the promised land, the land that God had promised to them, covenanted to them, uh, God reaffirms that promise. You will be a great nation, you will have a land, you'll be a blessing to all peoples. And what God says in this covenant is, here is what I expect of you. And he gives them laws to live by. He gives them a way to be a people, a nation. And he also gives them a symbol to mark this. And it's called the Ark of the Covenant. It was a big, elaborate gold box uh, in which were put uh, the tablets where the Ten Commandments that God gave to Moses and the Israelites, they were put in there and a couple of other special items were put in there. But this Ark of the Covenant was a reminder to the people that God had established a relationship with them and God had promised to be faithful to that relationship and he was asking them to be faithful as well. Now, I said contract and covenant are two different things. A contract is a legal document. It deals with business matters, um, whereas a covenant is a relational agreement. It's about saying who we are together, how we relate to each other. A, a covenant is a relationship. A covenant is also perpetual. In other words, nothing can stop it. Whereas a contract usually 
has an end date, an expiry. You know, this is true for so long and then it ends. Uh, like the warranty on our coffee maker, we can think of things in the world around us like uh, in the year 1999 when an agreement between the United Kingdom and China came to an end. There was a piece of land called Hong Kong and China had uh, essentially leased it to uh, to the United Kingdom and in 1999 that agreement was over and the United Kingdom gave it back to the country of China. Contracts come to an end, covenants do not. Now the other thing that's crucially different about both of them is that a covenant is unbreakable where a contract can be broken. This is going to be a little confusing but let me put it this way, a contract has terms in it and as long as you abide by those terms the contract remains in effect but as soon as you uh, fail to follow one of those stated uh, parts of the agreement well then the contract it's like it no longer exists you have made it null and void kind of like if i play basketball with my keurig machine the contract can be broken a covenant can't now in the Bible, God actually says a few times that Israel has broken my covenant. Now, he doesn't mean that it has fallen apart and come to an end. What he means is that they have failed in living up to what he asked of them. But the covenant continues. The covenant is perpetual. It keeps going. And that's because God seeks to establish a relationship with us that isn't just on again, off again, but is actually for eternity. And we can see in the passage that we read today that covenant is crucially important to the nation of Israel. And as we understand it in the life of that nation, we can understand it better for ourselves as well. For one thing, and this is so important, a covenant is a commitment yesterday to tomorrow's relationship. Why do I say that? Well, because it's not just a, a short-term thing, it's a perpetual thing, as I said, but it also means that when we enter into a covenant with someone, when we enter into a covenant with God, there's a point in time when that agreement begins. And because it's eternal, there's no ending to it. It means that for every moment after we make that agreement, we are living in the middle of the covenant. I think that's important because often we treat covenants more like contracts and we think that they come to an end or we think that somebody has done something that causes it to just fall apart and be null and void. But a covenant is a commitment yesterday to tomorrow's relationship. And so God, as he's talking to his people, always assumes that the covenant is there, the relationship is there. They may be unfaithful, but the relationship hasn't ended. And the people, this is where we get mixed up. The people fail to get that, and often we fail to get that. We sort of assume that, well, I don't feel like I have a relationship with God today. I feel like God is distant, so maybe it's, maybe it's off. Maybe it's over. But God is faithful to his covenant. It started yesterday or years ago, and it continues, which means that today, regardless of how I feel, regardless of how easy or difficult it is to live in relationship with God, the relationship is there. If I have entered into that covenant, it's there. A covenant is a commitment yesterday to tomorrow's relationship, and that matters because sometimes we... we look at the past and we think, well, that happened so long ago. It doesn't really matter anymore. Or we do something different and we say, well, I haven't gotten out of this relationship what I wanted. So I'm not going to put myself into it anymore. What happened in the past affects the future. It keeps going. So we can't say it happened so long ago. It no longer matters. A covenant keeps going. But we also can't say that because I haven't gotten out of it what I wanted, that it no longer applies. God, in his relationship with his people, was constantly trying to grow their faithfulness, call them back into a proper relationship with him. 
he was still guiding them into a future that hadn't happened yet, trying to lead them towards uh, the, the fuller, richer relationship that he wanted with them. And in fact, in the passage that we read, King David and the Israelite nation are celebrating the covenant. They're bringing the Ark of the Covenant back into a place of prominence in the capital city of Jerusalem. They are offering sacrifices. They're singing praises. David is giving out gifts to all the people. They're celebrating the covenant, even though only a part of it had been fulfilled. God had made them a nation. God had given them a land, but they had yet to see their nation become a blessing to all the nations around. That would not come for many, many years. Did they back out of it because they hadn't seen it all happen? Well, God was still working that out. And I think we see that in our own relationships. Sometimes we start a relationship full of dreams of what it's going to be like. And then as you start living the relationship, well, reality sets in. Struggles come. Our weaknesses show up. And we let each other down. Does that mean that the covenant has ended? No, it just means that we're still working towards that future. A covenant is a commitment yesterday to tomorrow's relationship. So as you stand in the midst of maybe some struggles with someone who is very special to you, maybe it is your spouse, maybe it's a family member, maybe it's a friend. There are covenants of friendship. Uh, you need to remember that God isn't expecting it all to be perfect now, but he is asking you to stick with it because a covenant keeps going. I said a covenant is yesterday's commitment to tomorrow's relationship. A covenant is also God's commitment to sustain the relationship. God was faithful to his commitments all the way along. He never let his people down, even though they felt let down. They just didn't always like what God knew was best. But God was faithful. He continued to love his people. He was patient with their sin and their rebellion. He uh, kept reminding them of their need for him. He kept going to them even when they would forget about that commitment from long ago or they would grow weary of waiting for the fulfillment of that relationship, the complete relationship. God was faithful, but God had also made it clear in his covenants that he would bear the full weight of those relationships. Yes, he disciplined his people, but when he first made that relationship, that covenant with Abraham, he made it clear by the way he expressed that relationship, that if Abraham's descendants broke the covenant, God would pay the price. God wanted to sustain the relationship. He knew we couldn't do it on our own. So he had committed from the beginning to be the one to carry and sustain us. And I mean, what a beautiful thing, if you think about that, that we're standing in the middle of a relationship that God started when he promised to be our God long ago. And we're still working our way towards the fulfillment of that relationship when we will stand before him and see him face to face. Right now, we're in the middle of that relationship and we feel weak and we feel tired and we feel inadequate to do um, what's needed for this relationship, to even be completely faithful to God. But God keeps saying, I will sustain it. And he proved it when he sent his son, Jesus Christ, who died a criminal's death to take on the punishment that we deserve for, for breaking a covenant with God, for breaking the relationship um, that God himself would sustain. When he sent his son, Jesus Christ, he made it possible for us to enter back into a relationship with God, for humanity to come back face to face with him, even though we don't deserve it. There's mercy in Jesus Christ. God is committed through covenant to sustain the relationship that he has established with us. And I think that gives us reason to celebrate. We stand in the middle of a relationship 
where the full weight of the relationship is actually on God's shoulders. Is that not good? Is that not something that deserves our joy? David and the people of his day celebrated with joy, not because everything had been perfect all along. They certainly had let down God. There had been times when they assumed God would do good things for them and God didn't because he knew that there was something better that they needed. So there were tough times that they had to live through. But in that moment, in chapter 16 of 1 Chronicles, David and the people celebrated because they were standing in the middle of a relationship. They remembered the promise that God had made. They remembered that God was the one who was sustaining them. And they were celebrating a relationship that they didn't deserve but desperately needed. And I think that's where a lot of us are today too. You know, it's true in our human relationships. Again, it, it may be that it's your, your marriage relationship that's strained and stretched right now. It may be friendships that are. Um, it may be a relationship that you have with people at work, coworkers, and yeah, you might not call it a covenant relationship, but the relationships are stretched and strained. God, though, operates out of covenant when he enters into relationship and he invites us to look at our relationships from a covenant point of view. I would include in that our relationship with our brothers and sisters in Christ within our church. You know, when we become part of a local community of believers, we are entering into a covenant with them that we are going to stand together, that we're going to work things through, even though things aren't always going to be easy. God has shown us that he stands with us even when we let him down. That he forgives us, that he invites us back with him because he knows we're weak and he's prepared to walk with us. God is the one who gives us a reason to celebrate even when things feel really difficult, even when relationships aren't going the way we think that they should. But when we stop and we remember what God has done to establish a relationship and maintain a relationship with us, then it's worthwhile to stop and reflect on what God can do in our human relationships as well. You and I are invited into a relationship with God, first of all. And that happens not by accident, but by us intentionally saying yes to him. He has made the way through Jesus Christ. As I said, there's nothing in our lives, even though we don't deserve a relationship with God, there's nothing in our lives that need to hold us back because Jesus has taken all of those things to the cross. He's forgiven us. But we still have to say yes to God because that's what you do with a relationship. You don't have accidental relationships with people. You have intentional ones. And you are invited into an intentional relationship with God right now. And you may feel like, I can't possibly live up to what God wants. Well, none of us can, and God knows that. That's why he sent Jesus. But he has, in the terms of covenant, he has offered us a relationship that he will carry, that we can stand in the midst of and celebrate and feel secure in because it will never end. And then if we say yes to him in that relationship, then he invites us to live out of that in our other relationships as well. To stop and look at each person in our lives and say, you know what, God has brought them into my life and I need to stop and I need to take that very seriously. And we need to look back and remember, if it's a marriage, look back and remember the vows that you made because you weren't making them in order to get something out of it for yourself. You were making them for better or for worse, for a relationship that would go to the end. If it's a friendship, you know what? Friendships can get strained as well. And we don't make formal covenants usually about friendship, but we can stop and we can look back and remember what it was that brought us into friendship with each other. What it was that showed us that this was somebody that we could relate to, who could be a support, who would listen, who would challenge, and live out of that. Even though today, maybe the relationship is strained, 
we started that relationship back then and we live in the midst of it now because it's a relationship that's supposed to still be there tomorrow. And we look to God for the grace to be able to extend to others just as he has to us. Remember the covenants. Remember the promises. Remember the relationships. And remember, you know, we, this is what we lose sight of most often is that we think that the relationships are there, including our relationship with God, including our marriages, including our friendships. Sometimes we get this notion that if it's not paying off for me, then it's time for me to get out. But the benefit of the relationship is the relationship. God's people found challenging times with God, times when they wished God would make different decisions and lead them in different directions, but he didn't because he knew better. But the fact was that even in those hard times, they had a relationship with the maker of this universe. In your toughest times, in your darkest moments, if you have said yes to God through Jesus Christ, then you are never alone. And you have someone with you who loves you no matter what. The benefit of the relationship is the relationship. And in a smaller way, that's true for us in our human relationships too. They aren't easy. They are work. We don't always agree. But the fact that we love each other in spite of that, that we can forgive one another and work through differences, becomes something that shows us what God is like. It shows us what he is like with us. And the relationship itself is the benefit. I invite you this week to take a look at the relationships in your life. First of all, look at your relationship with God. Because just because you've gone to church, just because you've read your Bible, does not mean that you have a relationship with him. A relationship is an intentional step. God has reached out to you. Have you turned to God and said, I need your forgiveness and I need you in my life now and forever. Thank you for Jesus Christ, that through him it's possible. God will hear that simple prayer and will come and enter your life and will walk with you forever. And no matter how you feel on any given day, the covenant is there. But also look at your human relationships and ask yourself, are some of them feeling a little stretched and strained right now? What can I learn from the way God treats me that will give me the grace to live today out of the promise of yesterday and for the sake of the relationship tomorrow? And as we do that, God uses us to reflect his love, his faithfulness, his covenant to the world around us. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, thank you that you have established a covenant because you came to earth to die for our sins. You want us in a relationship with you and you have told us that if we will receive your grace, if you, we will trust you, then we enter into a relationship with you that will never end. And Lord, as we say yes to you, help us to live out of that relationship that started yesterday, that goes into tomorrow. And whatever we face today is just part of learning how your strength and your grace can sustain us. Lord, I pray for relationships. I pray for those who are feeling lonely right now, who are feeling strained in their relationships, that you would teach us all to look to you, to fill us up with your love and your mercy so that we can give to those relationships today, so that we can trust you to sustain them into tomorrow. And Lord, we pray this in the name of Jesus. Amen.
And now, may the name of our Lord Jesus be glorified in you and you in him according to the grace of our God and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen.